Welcome to a brand new episode of Plead Your Case. I'm Logan Arblaster. We have a lot to talk about today. First, the NHL trade deadline was last week, and there was a lot of movement that could change the scope of the playoff race. Also, NFL free agency, a lot of moves to talk about with the league year officially starting today. You know what to do. Sit back, relax. It is time to plead your case. Back here for the first segment on Plead Your Case. The National Hockey League regular season is winding down with the trade deadline hitting last Friday. Jake Gensel got traded to Carolina, the Golden Knights loaded up, and more. I'm Logan Arblaster here with my panelists of Brett Gombita and Tyler Aaron. And Tyler, Tyler, we'll start with you. There's been a lot of trades, a lot of activity early on. Who won at the deadline? By far, for in my opinion, the biggest winner has to be the Vegas Golden Knights. Absolutely loaded up. At the deadline, you just won the Stanley Cup last year. You just acquired Anthony Mantha from the Capitals, Noah Hannafin from Calgary, and Thomas Hurdle in a late trade deadline deal with the San Jose Sharks. And all you gave up were a few draft picks, a few prospects, and you gained draft capital too, acquiring third round picks in 2025 and 2027. And you can tell they are going all in for a back-to-back -back Stanley Cup. Another one of my winners I have is the Winnipeg Jets, acquiring Sean Monaghan from the Montreal Canadiens, as well as Tyler Toffoli and Colin Miller in two separate deals with the Winnipeg Jets. And all you gave up were draft picks, a first, a third, a second, a fourth, and a third across from this year's draft to 2027. And another one of a big winner is the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, unfortunately, it's sad to see our uh, our boy go uh, Jake Gatzel from the Penguins but all you gave up were just a few prospects who are gonna eventually turn out really good hopefully from the Penguins perspective but you also got Evgeny Kuznetsov from Washington too and obviously those three all three of those teams you can tell they're going all in for the playoffs and hopefully you know win the Stanley Cup. It was certainly sad to see Jake Gensel leave the Penguins. No more Jake Shakes anymore at the arena. Brett, was there anybody that you thought won at the trade deadline? I actually do have the Hurricanes as my biggest winner, getting Jake Gensel. I thought that was big for them. And they give up these prospects. We won't know how good they are yet, but in the future we could be saying that the Penguins won this deal if it doesn't work out with Gensel. So we never know, but I also have the Dallas Stars as one of my winners, acquiring Chris Tanev from the Calgary Flames. And I think the Stars are going all in. They've been weak at defense this year, and that's what they did at the trade deadline. They acquired a big defenseman that can help them for their Stanley Cup push. And then the Avalanche as well, acquiring Casey Middlestat from the Buffalo Sabres. Avalanche are going all in. They're trying to get their second cup in three years. And that second line hasn't been the same since Nazim Kadri left in free agency. So the Avs, they give up a young defenseman to the Sabres. He could turn out to be good one day too. So. We'll never know. There is some winners now. There's, there could be some winners in the future. And we've talked about the winners. Now, are there any losers at the deadline? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, first one at the top of my list is the LA Kings. And that's because they did absolutely no moves at the deadline, which is very shocking. I know during the deadline day, they were in talks with the Boston Bruins for goaltender Linus Allmark. Unfortunately, those fell through, and Boston will still have that tandem with Allmark and Jeremy Swayman. The connection's still there up in Boston. And the Kings, who are third place in the Pacific Division, you have some teams hot on your tail. You've been struggling as of late, and definitely your goaltending position has been your biggest struggle along with offense. But not making any moves at the deadline when you are currently in a playoff spot is definitely going to hurt them, especially when we are getting into the dog days of March into the end of the season. Another one that I think is the New York Rangers. Um, and mostly the reason why I have them as the biggest loser is they were literally inquired on almost every single big, big name player, including Jake Getzel. They offered a, a deal with the Penguins, which would send Capo Caco 
over to Pittsburgh. What a but, name. Um, yeah, what a name. Second overall pick in 2019, I believe. And, I mean, you acquired Alex Wenberg from Seattle. You got Chad Ruedel from the Penguins. And then you also got Nick Patan to replace Philip Heedle as your third-line center, which is a downgrade in my opinion. And then, But then you get Jack Roslevic from Columbus. And all you gave up were mid-round draft picks in 2024, 25, 26, and 27. And those are conditional too and not overall not the worst by the rangers but the fact that they missed on so many different big name players to get their team better is definitely going to hurt them especially come playoff time i mean last year's team they had patrick kane vladimir tarasenko players like that i mean it's going to hurt them and last but not least another bit of a surprise is the boston bruins only acquiring patrick maroon who has a very hated relationship with their captain brad marchand um, and all the drama there, and also Andrew Peak, just to build on that bottom six, um, that depth, and it's not really going to, I mean, they pretty much just replaced uh, their bottom six with depth. I mean, they lost J- Jacob Zaborl and Luke uh, Tor- Tororoski, excuse me, and, you know, they just replaced their depth. Are they a little bit better? Yes, but based on how amazing that Atlantic division is with Florida, Toronto, Tampa Bay, Detroit in the mix as well. And I just don't think Boston got any better than what they did. And they lost a few of their great young guys as well as some draft capital. Tyler, you gave a lot of great insight there. And Brett, I saw your initial reaction to Tyler giving the losers. What is your reaction? I'll keep it short and sweet. We don't know yet. It's only been a week. It's too early to judge. We don't know who the losers are. We could come back, we could revisit in five years, and we could say, man, some of these prospects that were dealt are good. The 2024 deadline, you know, it's too early. But if I had to pick, I would agree with TA and say the New York Rangers because I feel like their deadline just didn't quite live up to the hype. Like he said, they were in the talks for Jake Gensel, a lot of other big players, and it all fell through. And then he said the Kings as well, they didn't make any moves. They're in the, they're in the uh, mix of the playoff race. If I were them, I would have definitely made a move as well. We spent a lot of time talking about the teams at the top of the Eastern Conference, Western Conference, and what they will do to help themselves try to build towards a Stanley Cup this season. But if there's some teams to talk about that maybe are trying to push just to get into the playoffs for you guys, who do you think made the moves at the deadline and maybe bolster themselves in a position to make the playoffs at the end of the year? Right, you can take this one first. Tyler Toffoli going to the Jets. He's been dealt plenty of times on deadline day. I think probably his sixth trade. He's going to Winnipeg from New Jersey. He's in the final season of his contract, too. He could walk, but this could be a one-year type, one type of thing, all-in kind of gamble from the Winnipeg Jets. And also for the Carolina Hurricanes as well, I think, because you, you acquired Jake Getzel, you acquired Evgeny Kuznetsov. Both of those players are both on expiring deals. Your cap situation is already in a rough place. You already have Washington retaining salary and Penguins retaining salary on Jake Getzel. So you can tell that both of those players are going to be rentals. Both Jake Getzel and Evgeny Kuznetsov are hitting, are going to hit the free agency market and stuff. And the, I mean, they still have questions again with their goaltending. And, but everything else, it looks spot on. You can tell they're going on a run this season for the Stanley Cup. And same with Vegas too with their moves. They're the two biggest winners. I think those two are going to face each other in the Stanley Cup final. That it would be a very entertaining series, but definitely you can tell based on what they gave up, stuff like that. They're all in, and they're going to perform well in the playoffs. You should be rooting for the Canes to make the finals, though. Uh, we, need to, we need to root for the Carolina Hurricanes as Penguin fans so that the Jake Gensel conditional first-round pick becomes a first because the only way it does is if the Carolina Hurricanes win the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see what moves propel these teams and what – moves are the best in terms of competing here at the end of the season in the regular season that's all for our nhl segment but when we come back we'll be discussing the moves in the national football league in free agency this is plead your case Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. 
I'm good. You should play. I'll probably just walk home. I'll probably just walk home. You walk? Yeah. You drive, right? No, 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 no. Be safe. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably, I'm probably gonna get going now. All right. Put some cool water on it. All right. Back on the second and final segment of today's episode on Plead Your Case, the NFL's legal tampering period opened Monday, which led to a burst of moves over the last couple of days. Big names, punters, and some players in between have come off the board. And we'll start first with the most important position on the field, the quarterbacks. And we're going to go through how we're going to do this is we're going to highlight specific positions on offense and transition to defense. And then later on, give some of our insight on where we think players might go who are still available. But Brett, we'll start with you on this segment. Highlight some of the quarterback signings going on so far. Steal the nation. Let's ride. That's all I got to <laughs> say. Russell Wilson's coming to the Steelers on a one-year veteran minimum. The Broncos are still paying him as well. But this allows him to compete with Kenny Pickett, and I'm pretty sure he's going to get the job. So it looks like 34-year-old Russ in his 13th season in the NFL will be starting for the Steelers next year at quarterback. We also had someone the same age as Russell Wilson get paid a whole lot more money, and that's Kirk Cousins going to the Falcons. Four years, $180 million. Kirk Cousins tore his Achilles last season. Is he worth that kind of money? Well, I think it's important to keep in mind that Russell Wilson's only getting $1 million from the Steelers, but he is still getting $38 million from the Broncos. So he is getting paid, just not necessarily all from the Steelers. But it is crazy to think that Kirk Cousins can be making that amount of money in comparison to Russell Wilson. And by the way, I know a lot of people have, have thought Russell Wilson might be washed. But this guy, outside of 2022, he's bounced back the last season. And in his last two years, has had 42 touchdown passes and 19 interceptions. That is absolutely astonishing to me because how people talk about him and with him getting benched, you would, have think, you would have thought he was a bottom five quarterback in the league. He did have good numbers. And I mean, I am really surprised. We, we see the Broncos missing the playoffs. Really, the only stat when you compare Russ and Kenny side by side, Kenny just has more wins. And that's honestly part to the defense. The cause of concern for me is that Russell Wilson only had two games last year where he passed for over 300 yards. And that is a major issue. But when you also look at it, he, he had a great stretch on their winning streak. The Broncos winning streak last season was a huge part of that. And in those, uh, in those games, he had no turnovers for the large majority of them. And that's a huge thing for the Steelers offense that plays a lot into who, you know, winning the turnover battles, running the football. And that could be part of the reason why he signed in Pittsburgh. And Tyler, do you have anything to add for Russell Wilson? For Russell Wilson, I think it's a great signing by the Steelers. Again, you've had a lot of questions at the quarterback position. Uh, Kenny Pickett getting hurt later in the season. You had Mason Rudolph come in, save the season for the Steelers. He's still on free agency market. I know the Steelers have expressed interest in Mason Rudolph, but um, Mason Rudolph just has no interest. And I think it's not only great for the Steelers, it's also going to be good for Kenny Pickett. It's going to give him better competition than what he had uh, with his competition being with Mitch Trubisky and Mason Rudolph. But now Kenny Pickett has that veteran guy where he can learn things off of. Because, I mean, when, Pe when Kenny Pickett came in, when he was drafted, Ben Roethlisberger was already retired. And there was no one of those veteran guys for Kenny Pickett to learn off of. And I think it's going to be great for Kenny. I think what's going to happen is if, let's say, Russell Wilson doesn't re-sign with the Steelers after this season, Kenny Pickett can come in and say, okay, it's my team now again. I have a lot more knowledge than what I did heading in, learning a lot from Russell Wilson. You know, this is my team now. Let's roll with it heading into 2025. And there could be an argument made that Kenny Pickett still does have that ceiling and that the outside circumstances he had to deal with with Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator, could have led to his maybe regression not so well playing on the field but 
But Russell Wilson, he definitely is an upgrade regardless, and I think the Steelers' best option overall, not even between free agency, but also with the players they have on the roster. I think that he utilizes George Pickens the best, and I think that's signified in the trade that they made to send Deontay Johnson to Carolina. But we've talked enough about the Steelers now. Let's get into some of the other quarterback signings. Kirk Cousins, you mentioned earlier, went to Atlanta for four years, $180 million. And then also Baker Mayfield, that's the one that opened my eyes the most, three years, $100 million to stay with the Buccaneers. Good for Baker. Good for him. I'm, I'm so happy for the guy. He's, when he was on Cleveland, it was hard for me not to root for him because obviously the Browns are one of our division rivals. But he revived his career with that uh, audition, really, I guess you could call it, that he had with the Rams. Earned him a one-year deal with Tampa, and he proved himself. He really proved himself this year, getting all the way to the playoffs. Ended up losing in the wild card, I believe. But shout out Baker, and now he's making $100 million. His first 4,000-yard season of his career, and arguably his best season of his career since that 2020 season where he defeated our Steelers in the wild card round. And he really did well last year, 28 touchdowns, only 10 intercep interceptions. And before that, the year before, he was kind of an on-the-fly starter for the Panthers then was picked up for the Rams. So a cool story for Baker Mayfield. Didn't really get a fair shake in Cleveland, in my opinion, with the coaching staff. And really, everybody knows if you're drafted to Cleveland, it's kind of hard to make a career out of it. So defeating those circumstances, going into the Buccaneers, making the most of that opportunity, wasn't injured last year, had a good supporting staff and players around him. Tyler, what do you make of the Baker Mayfield signing? I mean, I think it's a great re-signing by Tampa Bay. He won them that wild card game last year, made them to the playoffs. And I mean, again, he had his best season of his career. He deserved what he got paid. Um, unlike Kirk Cousins, I'd like to express my feelings on that later, but great job by, and two uh, for Baker, he has weapons in Tampa Bay to use in Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. And I mean, did he really have two great wide receivers like that when he played for Cleveland? And like, yeah, like, Odell I don't know. and Jarvis. Yeah, I mean, Odell and Jarvis were solid. I mean, they were solid, but on the same level as Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Debatable. I mean, I mean, it's debatable. I mean, trust me, I think Tampa Bay has some really great fans, even the all that but I mean overall it's a great signing and they re-signed Mike Evans too as well on a two-year deal as well so I mean good for Tampa Bay things are starting to look on the uprise ever since Tom Brady retired. Baker Mayfield's last contract his one-year deal with the Buccaneers was only worth four million dollars now over the course of the next three years we'll be making 100 million dollars. Some other free agent signings at the quarterback position were Sam Darnold to the Vikings replacing Kirk Cousins, who's going to be recovering from his ACL injury this year and coming back with the Atlanta Falcons. Mariota went to the Commanders, and Jameis Winston signed to the Cleveland Browns, likely to be their backup to Deshaun Watson. But we've talked a lot about the quarterbacks, and we talked a lot about Russell Wilson and what impacts he might make on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, staying in the AFC North, just yesterday alone, with today being the new day in the league or the new league year starting today. There was a lot of moves happening yesterday, especially at the running back position in the AFC North. Uh, Joe Mixon was traded to the Houston Texans, and then Derrick Henry, the king, travels to Baltimore. It was like a carousel yesterday, seeing all these AFC North uh, running back moves, minus the Steelers. They're, they're staying put, obviously, but I mean, you see guys come in like King Henry. He's going to be impossible to stop. I know he's getting old, but he's, he's still got game, and then Gus Edwards leaving. He goes from one Harbaugh brother to another leaving for uh, L.A. And then Joe Mixon to the Texans in a trade. Cincinnati was originally going to cut him, but they ended up dealing him to the Texans. I like that a lot for the Texans. It adds another weapon in there for that young offense they have. And then, yeah, just Zach Moss coming back to the Bengals. Uh, don't really get that one. And then, I mean, can I just rant about running backs in general go here ahead. for a minute? Yeah, go, go ahead. right ahead. I don't understand why you give a running back a two- or a three-year deal at this point in the NFL, especially after last year. I mean, especially Devin Singletary. How did he get three years from the Giants? I don't understand it at all. He could end up being horrible in the first year, and they could cut him and have to pay him a bunch of money. But Aaron Jones is really the only running back so far this free agency that has gotten a one-year deal, and that's really the only one I'm a fan of because – I mean, we don't. The, the future is uncertain. Even Henry's deal, I'm not really that big of a fan of. He could retire after this year. Running back shelf lives are very, very short. 
And I think that's something in the NFL that teams have tried to stay away from for a lot of seasons is giving running backs contracts larger than one or two year deals. But this offseason, we've seen a plethora of them. And we listed some of the maybe minor names in comparison to the more significant names that have signed early on. And Saquon Barkley, he's on the move to the Eagles on a three-year deal. And then also running backs, Josh Jacobs, DeAndre Swift, Tony Pollard, a lot of other bigger names off the board, guys. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, Also another one, Austin Eckler going to the Washington Commanders as well on a two-year deal. But pointless contract. I mean, I'm not sure if he's the same Austin Eckler as people think he's going to be. Yeah, that is really true as well. I don't know how he's going to do in Washington, but I'm going to disagree with you on your running back take, Brett. I think... Got some heat going on. I think... What's the disagreement? I think running backs, I mean, they deserve to get... I mean, I get I get the... what people talk about, about the running backs. I understand, you know, they have a very short shelf life. What if Tony Pollard goes to the Titans this year, tears his ACL, and then Ty J Spears becomes a top 10 running back in the league? What do they What do they do the next two years with Pollard? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you should keep him. The contract length. I don't think it matters. The NFL is a very offensive game now, and I think running running backs have always been a big part of the NFL since it since the very beginning. And I don't understand the hate towards running backs now. But they're they're so easy to replace. That's what it is. That's why. They're so easy to well, replace. Well, quarterbacks are pretty easy to replace, too. Wide receivers are, too. Really? You Wide receivers are, too. Yeah, you can draft a receiver. That's easy. But, I mean, running backs are just easier to replace. Yeah, I mean, so are wide receivers. You can say the same thing about a wide receiver. You could. If I can run and catch the ball, I'm going to make it. I wish it was that simple. Well, we've talked enough about the offensive side of the ball. When we come back... We will transition onto the defensive side of the ball, talking about some of the signings that have occurred already. Not a whole lot of action going on in the wide receiver market, but also giving our takes on where we think the free agents that are still available will end up landing. All that and more on Plead Your Case. This is so fun. Cornucopia. Try instead of train. Right, we'll take- You're watching Plead Your Case. I'm Logan Arblaster with my panelists, Brett Gombita and Tyler Aaron. And we're back talking about the NFL free agency. We talked about the offensive side of the ball. Now transitioning to the defensive side of the ball, getting into some of these moves that were made. Christian Wilkinson, defensive tackle, four years, $110 million to the Dolphins. Or spent five years with the Dolphins. He's not going to the Dolphins, but a four-year deal. What do you guys make of that? I like it a lot. I think it helps uh, the Raiders front seven tremendously. Pair him with Max Crosby as well. That could be one of the best edge rushing slash DT duos in the NFL. And then another one as well that I like while we're on the topic of uh, defensive tackle, Chris Jones, he stays at home. He was probably the top free agent in the uh, entire free agency pool, but he stays at home with Kansas City. He gets five years, 158 million. I like that a lot. Keep your guys. It's exciting for the Raiders. Josh Jacobs, the longtime fan favorite, goes to the Packers, but they sign a great defensive tackle in Christian Wilkin, Wilkins for four years. And also another defensive tackle signing, Brian Burns, five years, $150 million with the Giants, Tyler. That's, I mean, it's a good signing for the Giants. You can tell based on that signing alone, they want to contend. Um, again, I mean, they've been in that mix of, uh, you know, one of the worst in the NFL. Um, besides that one good year with Daniel Jones. And I I know they've had their offensive struggles, especially at the quarterback position. But with this signing, the defense already looked scarily good last year. I mean, I like the direction that they're heading, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And I think they just want to be a team that can contend, especially since now the NFC is that weaker conference than that AFC. 
and you can potentially make it into the wild card round with a 500 record making moves like that i mean you can tell the giants they want to contend they want to make the playoffs and i think with it's a step in the right direction another team that's trying to boost up their roster the houston texans Hunter, another pass rusher signed there just the other day for two years, 49 million. He had 16 and a half sacks, 83 tackles, and 23 tackles for loss. And the Texans, a team that already last year, they won the first round of the playoffs against the Cleveland Browns, and they have their quarterback. Now they're bolstering the defensive side. Good for the Texans. They went, they went hard on both ends. They, they got Joe Mixon as well. I like what they're doing, and I expect them to be exactly where they were at last year maybe even a bit further. Maybe we could see them go to the divisional, go to the AFC Championship. They're having a good free agency so far, and I like what I'm seeing from them, but we'll see if they can come back in that division next year. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you too on that. I mean, by far looking at the list, the Houston Texans have been the most involved uh, team in making moves. They've made the most signings by more than any other NFL team so far, and almost and all of their free agency t signings too are on defense they're really trying to build up that defense they are completely redoing their entire cornerback room as well they signed three different cornerbacks um in free agency alone most notably being jeff okuda to a, a one-year deal and i mean defense was probably the biggest struggle for houston last year um and i think you know redoing your defense getting better at it, I mean, you're going to just take a step forward and up, and, I, and they've definitely gotten better. Than defense wins championships is what they say, and there's not a whole lot of defensive tackles that are of stellar caliber that are available this offseason, so I think teams are trying to go out and get the guys that are available right away. And staying in the middle of the defense, Patrick Queen talking about the linebackers. He's in Pittsburgh now, no longer with the yes. Baltimore Ravens. And for yes. Steelers fans, you love to hear that. <laughs> the Ravens get the king, the Steelers get the queen. I love it. I love the way you phrase that. The that terminology awesome. is great. How that. about this? This is the most money. And I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. I, I'm hearing in my ear Mason Rudolph just signed with the Titans as well. Whoa. 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 I, thought, I thought he was going to be a Carolina How Panther. How about that? Whoa. Wow. Mason Rudolph. Could he be the starter? Good for you, Mason Rudolph. Good One for you, year, huh? $3.6 for Mason Rudolph, and he might get a chance to start. I'm happy for the guy, I uh -huh. got to say. I mean, how about that? I mean, the quarterback competition is going to be great. You got Will Levis down there, uh, Malik Willis, uh, Mason Rudolph. It's just those three guys battling it out. I mean, it's going to be good. I can see all three of those quarterbacks starting at least a game for Tennessee because there's a lot of uncertainty in Tennessee. Well, with that news, I'm going to be wearing my Mason Rudolph jersey tomorrow in honor. But getting back to Queen, I mean, this is the most money the Steelers have ever paid a free agent. And this deal reminds me a lot of the James Ferrier pickup, which was a little bit before my time, I think somewhere around early 2000s. But we go out, we get a guy who plays his rookie contract with a team, a linebacker specifically. He comes to us. Ferrier was a stud for us. Maybe Patrick Queen could be the second coming of James Ferrier. The Steelers have been looking for their middle linebacker replacement since Ryan Shazier got injured six and a half years ago. And they traded up for Devin Bush. They went through numerous guys. Everybody knows Robert Spillane, Miles Jack twice. Just a number of guys the Steelers have been through. And now I think they might have finally found their starting middle linebacker for the future in Patrick Queen. So we've highlighted the offensive side. We highlighted the defensive side. I do want to now talk about the potential free agent signings that could still happen with the players available. So I'm just going to now list off some players to you guys. And to my knowledge, none of these guys have been signed yet. Free agency is still going on. But give me some of the teams you think they could go to after I list these off. So Kelvin Ridley, he played with the Jaguars last year, wide receiver. Tyrone Smith, offensive tackle. Justin Simmons, the safety from the Broncos, could be another pickup for the Steelers. Chase Young, an edge rusher, Josh Reynolds, Jadavion Clowney, Kyle Duggar, a safety, Kevin Zietler, a guard, DJ Reader, and DJ Wonham. Guys, who do you think these guys are going to go to? I would love to see Simmons in the black and gold. Pair him with Minka. That, that safety duo would be terrorizing in the secondary. That would be something that's nice to see. I feel like I'm, I'm a homer when I say this, too, but... I have a couple other guys on watch for the Steelers as well, such as uh, Tyler Boyd and Jerome Baker. But we'll see what happens. I mean, Boyd, he, he played at Pitt in college. 
He played high school at Clareton. He's a local kid. It would be a good story. Baker, on the other hand, he's he happens to be uh, close friends with one of our current linebackers, Landon Roberts. That would be cool to pair those two together like they were in Miami. Yeah, it would be. Tyler Boyd is also the only one I have on the Steelers to watch. But going to Justin Simmons, I actually think he's going to go over and sign to the other side of PA. I think he will sign Ooh. with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I mean, there was reported interest between the two sides about – they're from sources, and I don't know if they were getting close to a deal being done or not, but I think Justin Simmons will go to Philadelphia. And that's all intriguing and interesting to see how it plays out. For the Steelers, i like them to go after Kelvin Ridley. I think now losing Deontay Johnson, they had a position of quality with Deontay Johnson and George Pickens. Maybe a locker room trade, just getting rid of Johnson for not all that much. But bringing in Kelvin Ridley would fill a hole, then they'll probably go after somebody in the draft. But I'd also like to see them target Justin Simmons. You pair him back there with Mika, like you said, Brett, and that could be pretty dangerous. But talking about other signings where other people could go, I think Jadavion Clowney is going to stay with the Ravens. He was very successful there, midseason pickup for the Ravens. And when he, when he came onto the team, not a whole lot of people thought he was going to succeed and really impact the team as much as he did. But as the season went on, he really showed that he can still be the same player. Yeah, definitely. So we'll see. Maybe the Steelers will target him. Maybe they won't. I wanted to touch on what you said about Calvin Ridley. I don't think he ends up back in Jacksonville with them getting Gabe Davis, but maybe New England pursues him. I mean, I know they need a receiver. I, there was I, a dark I bet horse they need team. a receiver. Uh-huh. If you hear what I'm saying, I bet they need a receiver. Uh-huh. Yeah, so for Calvin Ridley, New England has already pursued Calvin Ridley for a trade already. Now he's hit the market. New England is in constant talks That's from what I've heard, but Calvin doesn't want to go to New England. At least that's what I've heard. Uh, I've heard he, he actually wants to stay in Jacksonville. The thing is, I don't know if Jacksonville wants him. I could see the Steelers' pursuit for him as well. Do I think that's a possibility? Maybe, but I think the Steelers would go after someone more like Tyler Boyd f- from that pit royalty. But I think maybe another one for Calvin Ridley, maybe Buffalo could pursue him to be that wide receiver too. Now Gabe Davis is gone. Ridley steps in as wide receiver two um, behind Stephon Diggs. I mean, that could be something we can see as well. That would be interesting to see Stephon Diggs with Calvin Ridley. I mean, with the passing attack of Josh Allen and the Bills, that would be scary to see for sure. But we've discussed a lot today on Plead Your Case between the NHL trade deadline and the NFL free agency starting off the new league year in the offseason with a lot of moves. But thank you for watching this episode of Plead Your Case And we will be right back next week for WCTV's only national sport debate show. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.